Hey everyone, hopefully the volume's coming out. All right, um, go through the mic. Just give it a go. See if it's coming through. Can you see? All right, seems like everything's good there. You can hear me nice and clear. All right, so what we've got here is Lumineth Box Unboxing. Ooh, pretty. So we'll be going through that tonight. Um, so just a few things very quickly. Um, got to thank Millennium for supplying this. Um, so thanks to Rob and the team for getting this for me. Um, news happening around. 40k 9th is only a few weeks away, end of the month. So uh, go to your local suppliers and or GW and get your boxes. Um, that's really about it, really. Oh, General's Handbook is coming out for pre-order this Saturday. So if you're in the Age of Sigma, get the General's Handbook. Uh, and it is five years of Age of Sigma. So spend the weekend playing Age of Sigma games. All right. So we might as well get stuck in the unboxing there. Eh? All right. I'll just move this down. Hopefully it's not going to be too bad. That's right. I'm opening it at the same time as everyone is watching it. So if you're watching this live, well, that's good. If not, leave a comment if you want more of these sort of things. Because it's always nice to get a bit of a change on the channel. And yes, you can see my face. So I've got a new camera. So it's not the greatest, but it'll do the job. Okay, so first up, you have a poster. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, oh, just one second, guys. We just. Do something for the missus. Okay. okay. Oh. okay. Ah. Okay. I believe these are the horses. We've got some lovely spearmen. We've got posters, so we break that. Uh, what's that? So it looks like more spearmen. We have another horses. Uh, number horses and then the light of Valerian. So let's see if we can get it a bit better. Mm. Not the best, but we'll hopefully as we evolve on the channel we can get a bit better. So we've got this is here there. So uh what have we got in these pockets? Huh? So on one side we have the dice. Uh, 
Uh, there we get. There we get. See through. And we've got the symbol there. Or six. So. so it looks like there's oh, probably 20 or so. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, all right, 20. So we've got 20 dice on there. Um, well, there's your gauge. So it's even got a half inch, one, two, three. So that's in one pocket. The other pocket, just bases. So what the guys sit on. See? And then what everyone is probably wanting. Oh, the book. So what we've got here. Oh, come on. How to build it? Oh. Yeah, so the dorm riders, the light of Valerian. Uh, looking pretty all right. And then the warden. The left page. And then the uh, printing guide. So if you ever need to know how to paint. And of course, I'm going to paint on that. So plenty of information there. Um, look at it. They sort of use a bit of a, what is it? Uh, looks like mostly uh, um, classic with a little bit of contrast in there. Um, yeah. Don't know how that works. We've got basically a dry bark and then layer liberated gold roofing. I have a feeling it was meant to be retributor. But who knows? So. <sighs> oh, he's messaging me. Um, of course, your core rule book. Then. Just, yeah, tokens and stuff. Look at that way, that's better. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. And then what I think everyone is more interested in is this book. So, all right, so we'll. Get this open. The cards first before I get too far into the book. So, oh, we can bind it up for me nicely. There we go. I'm going to get it. So, we've got 
So battle traits. So the ether core to reserve, battle trait, battle trait. Spell master, so awesome command traits there. Artifacts of power. Artifacts of power. Uh, law, so spell casting. That's looking all right. Um, and then, of course, you've got the different um, factions. So this is a uh, Sarah, the Illumith, the Zakrak. I'm probably pronouncing them wrong, but it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Please get there. Okay, so well, that's not that. So, onto the Duke. Let's see if I can get this a bit better, hey? Just learning this thing. So it's only brand new. On the second hand, I've got it off, mate. So. Uh, I should have left it the night. Give me one minute. I might have a better idea. You do. Not very good, I admit. Um, oh, sorry. Nice cover. You got so it looks like it's Techless versus Selesh. There's a bit of a Quick summary of what is going on. A little bit of artwork. And here they are going up against, of course, um, Selesh. I wonder if I can put you up there, you be better. And what for no. That's all right. Okay, go. All right. So just a little bit of a spiel about them. Nothing really fantastic. Well, what we'll do is we'll probably do some more videos. So some, here's some nice artwork. That's the same artwork that's on the inside cover, but this one's in cover. You got the what well, they go on the, the rise of enlightenment, the twin realm. So, hi, she, shin, you do. And then, of course, the realm with your eight pointed star. So we all know that eventually something's going to happen. So this is the map. Paish. Yeah. 
Let's close that. Okay, so this is just how the army is all lined up and all that. Yeah. Uh, um, this is the room of the luminous. So it seems like all about the nature and elements. Just hoping no one's getting any more sick from this. Uh, the different tribes. And then talks about age of myth. So. This is Teclas and his mount. So, first among the Lumineth to bring war to the forces of darkness is Teclas, for he's known well the cost of isolationism. This is Kindred Spirit Salah, Selin, the incarnate soul of Hashi's true moon. At his side, he descends to the field of battle. In a blaze, of divine moonlight, searing beams of Hashishian magic all around. So he's known as the Mage God. Uh, that's more interesting. What's it got to do with it? Um, So I'm just reading this. Okay. So essentially, the deep, the island of Deakin, there I said it for the end of the major failure. So he pretty much remaking entire races beyond his talents, he admits it, because he didn't realize the curse. And then after the Deakin, he went, well, I'm going to make a second attempt. And he thought, oh, well, these elves look good, but then the seed of pride in every of their the luminous personality realized that, or Teclas realized that his creations were imperfect as well when it was too late. So then this is where he um, met this the creature. So this so this thing, and he pretty much pleaded with them. For many days and night. And then he very much was in despair. He was thinking about throwing himself in the void. And that's when the moon, so the true moon, emerged from the shadow once more and stood the strange and wondrous creature, which is this creature, the essence that took form. And then he engaged in them in a long debate, speaking words strange into the arch mage mind in the, the tongue of ancient Uthan. Yeah. Uh, uh, pretty much, Tickler's told what happened, all the um, horrible stuff that's happened. And apparently, the this creature really, really doesn't like Selesh. So he said, "Oh, well, I promise to walk with you." And with that, he'll try and um, 
heal his race. So heal the Lumineth, make them so they're not going to fall to the corruption of Selesh. So then, yeah. So that's how he got blessed by the moon. Because he's always been affiliated with the moon. Because Teclis is the moon, Tyrion is the sun. So, yeah, so that happened. And then we have the guy that I think everyone's been wondering about. That's right, the light of Valerian. Uh, so they even make mention of back in the world that was about him stop it, trying to stop Nagash's resurrection and then his arcane do against Ark in the Black. So apparently because of what happened and that his people remembered him across his eons and his spirit because it was so strong and luminous it essentially existed in a scattered spiritual energy which the gash couldn't claim and then that's where Teclis pretty much tried to well, create a body form because he realized that his soul could not truly be destroyed. So then, yeah, he created a body form to inhabit it. So it seems like this is the same Illyrion. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, so the curse that Arkham put on him somehow lang lingered. Uh. Uh. Okay, so pretty much this body he's in, eventually it will wither and pretty much destroy itself. Because it can't take a soul because of what um, Arkin the Blacks cursed it to him when he was in his mortal form. So, yes, so that's what happened. So, the body eventually crumbles to dust, and then they pretty much go, All right, we'll put you in a new body, and he keeps going again. So that's what happened there. Um, then we have. A model that I'm not particularly fond of. Uh, I won't even try and pronounce her name. But... Well, so it's not actually a name character. I thought it was. It's actually a, just a normal hero. Okay. So essentially, they just are in connection to the earth and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might go into them a bit more later. And then, of course, we've got the armies. So we've got the wardens, which are the spearmen. Sentinels, which are the shooters, the dawn riders, which are the horses. Then we've got the disciples of the mountain. So you've got the stone mages, the stone guard. Then I think what everyone is waiting for. Yeah. So the stone heart. Yeah. He looks sick. Uh, then we have Teclas. This is Mount. Sorry. 
Ну, выходит со мной. А ну, когда the face there? And I don't know why, but that looks more animated than what you see there. I'd rather have the facial expression from that page on him than what he's got on here and there. Back up, might make it easier. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Um. Take this. So I think the thing you've got to understand is these two are in harmony with each other. So Teclas can't will never ride him because he's not a mount. He's essentially a the mount is essentially the embodiment of their moon. So essentially the ride the moon is an insult. So that's why he's floating. Of course, we also Avenor the Stoneheart King. Here we go. Of course, we're going to have them against OBR. You got I reckon the high sentinel is the Skyhawk Lantern. Sorry, it's not the best. There you go, that's a bit better. Then of course you have the sentinels, the shooters, and then it's high sentinels, the Skyhawk Lantern. So you got two different ways to build the lantern. Neat. Uh, you got the stone guard. Still reckon the bull's head should have been their helmet, not on top of the helmet. Oh, there you go. Now, if you can build them all like that, I think you won't have too many people complaining. <laughs> yeah, the stone mage. Spirit of the Mountain. So High Warden. There you go, that's a bit hopefully better. Doesn't like me moving, unfortunately, the camera. Uh, glue Spikes. So this is. Oh, there you go. Surrounded by blue spikes. Uh, the hosts are just a normal thing. Hosts are making, you know, what, just a few. Then, painting guide. Ah, so. Okay, so that's why they do the dry bark so it's dry bark then you put the retributor on it but you leave the dry bark in the recesses okay that makes sense so they pretty much um, sort of a bit of a mixture of use a bit of um contrast here and there but a lot of classic as well. So, yeah. You got your crest, your rune. Uh, oh, yeah. So, pretty much when it comes to the flesh, they 
pretty much to start with Gilman and then go and then apply your um play one and then go from there. Mm. Oh yeah, how to do your gems. So grace here, contrast and then some white scale at the top. Yeah. yeah, so they sort of do a good mixture of you know 50 50. Some of it we want contrast, some of it we don't. Yeah. Oh, so how to do that? Yep, there we go. That veil that we're all concerned about. I got actually a good idea. That's that's good. Then we got the smoke. But, yeah, because there was a little bit of her on the other side about how to do her robes. So they obviously know that people would struggle with that one, so they made sure they put it in there. Um, but yeah. And then if you want to do the different sub factions. Or different stallions. So, yeah. So, yeah, that'll be good even if, you know, for instance, if you're a um, Lord of the Rings player, you want to do the different stallions, you know, there's options there. You know, basing, masonry. Hmm. So, I've always wanted to know how to do this more sandy colour now. Got a bit of an idea. Awesome. Then we're going to allegiance. So I might read this. There's a lot here and it's probably going to be a bit difficult. All right. So, battle traits. Each the court's reserve. So, each unit in uh, Round Lord's Army starts with one Ether Court reserve. Once per phase, you can say one unit will use it. And to use the following reserve abilities. How to do so? Subtract one from that baby characteristic for the rest of the battle. So if you use them turn one, and they've got a leadership of, I'll say a seven, I don't know what it is at this stage. Seven, um, so there'll be six for the rest of the battle. So heightened reflexes, you, so you pick this unit, then it's picked. To be the target of an enemy attack, you can add one to save rolls. That's all right. Uh, heightened senses, you can say that you will use this ability to pick, to shoot or fight. You may add one to hit rolls. Magical boost, so you must use this ability after it has attempted to cast a spell, but before any unbinding rolls are made for that spell. If you do so, you can add one to that casting roll or re-roll one. Okay, so you can say that you will use this one after it. So yeah, if you cast it and you say you need a seven and you get a six, you can say, I'm going to use that, and it gives you a plus one to cast it. But you must use it before any unbinding rolls are made, though. So essentially, after a spell, you can use it, but before unbinding, you can use it. But it has to be one or the other. You can't do both. All right, magical insight. So at the start of your hero phase, you must say if you're going to use it, you attempt to cast one extra spell. Can't complain about that. All right, Absor absorb despair. If a friend of you unit uses its aether reserve while it is wholly within 18 of any friendly Cathars, so that's the robe lady, pick one up within 18 and it, say it will absorb the negative energy. I cannot absorb the negative energy more than once per phase. Okay, that makes sense. So essentially you go, all right, I'm going to do magic, it essentially stops that neg one bravery happening, I believe. Yeah, 
the, the Virgil that does not subtract one from the bravery. Instead, you pick one enemy unit within 18. You just have subtract one from the bravery characteristic for the rest of the battle on that enemy unit. But the same unit cannot be affected by this ability more than once per battle. That's good because otherwise you get I'm going to zap down your most high bury the unit and put it down to a zero. So you can't do that. So essentially, if you decide to use it all at once, you go right out, hide and reflex it, boom. That's doing a combat trade. So that unit, but because it's um, wholly within 18, it won't get the neck one very big buff. And the sh shooting, because you would class it in the shooting phase, you can do the hide and senses at once of action, and it won't get it. So, so on and so forth. That pretty much makes sense. Um, and then lightning reaction. So this is the one where you pick two units instead of one to fight. So yeah. So essentially, how that works is, if it's your round start combat, you do two, then the enemy does one, then you do two, then the enemy does one, until you're all done. Uh, but this, the, the I've got. I like this, I've got a designer's note. Only applies to units during the combat phase. No, this ability only applies to units that fight during the combat phase. Therefore, it cannot be used for units that fight at the start or end of the combat phase or for units that fight in any other phase other than the combat phase. Okay. And then they got the great creation. So if you choose to be, so you've got the Uranic, the Sea the Eoak, and the Zikrak. So I'm probably pronouncing them completely wrong, but so be it. Oh, for now. Okay, so yep. Yeah. So Battle Trace, where is the light? Shining Company. If a Venar unit is set up, and if the base of the mo each model is touching the base of two or more other models from the same unit, that unit becomes a shining company. So that's the spear guys and the horsemen, I believe. Oh, and the archers. I think they're part of that one too. Uh, so the unit remains a shining company until finishing move. The base must. After finishing move, the base of each model in the unit is no longer touching the two. Uh, That unit remains a shining company until after finishing a move. The base of each model in the unit is no longer touching the base of two or more models from the same unit, or until after removing a slain model from that unit, the bases of any remaining models in that unit are not touching the bases of two or others. Okay, so essentially you want to be making sure at least two are touching any model at the same time. So check. One from hit rolls for text that target a shining company. However, a shining company cannot run or charge, and models in that unit can only move one inch when they pile in. So essentially, they're treating them like um, the Greek phalanx. So you will struggle to hit them if you go and charge them, but if they but they can't charge you while they're in the shining company maneuver. But once they get into that shining company maneuver, it makes it harder to hit them. Then the, the spell casts. Yeah, so this is the Cathal Generals only command trait. Uh, once in each of your hero phase, you can re-roll one fail cast roll for this general. Uh, number two is an extra spell from the law. And then War Master number three is at the start of your hero phase, roll a dice on a four class, you receive an extra command point. Then the air looms is Phoenix Stone. So if friendly Lumineth round will a hero slain within 12 of the bear before removing that model from the play, roll a dice on a six. That model is not slain. All wounds allocated to it are healed, and any wounds that are currently remain to be allocated. Or it's unit are negated. 
One and six. I mean, if you get it, you're going to be laughing, but it's only to the spellcasters. What's the Stone Age? Yeah. I can't see you really taking that one. Uh, the bearer can attempt to cast one extra spells in your hero phase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. Add three to attack characteristics of that weapon. Yeah. What's a... Hmm. Yeah, okay. I can see maybe why you take it, but okay. We'll go into the stats. So, all right. So this is the mountain ones, the bulls and all that, and the uh, what was it the stone caller too? I believe because he's got that keyword. Yeah, stone mage, yep. He's got it, dude, yep. So, battle traits, mountain kindred, enduring rock. After armies have been set up, but before the first battle run, you can, and at the start of any of your hero phases, you can pick one, pick any number of friendly of the uh, Alarath unit, and say they are adopting the mountain stacks. If you do so until your next hero phase, if the weapon used for the attacks that target a Alarath unit in the mountain stance has a rank character of neck one, change it to zero. So essentially we've got no rank. That's only on neck one. So if you got someone with a neck two plus, so neck two, neck three, neck four, blah, 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 it won't do it. So it's essentially the old lizardman, oh, sorry, seraphim um, ability that they had. Tectonic force. At the end of each combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within each, uh, within one inch of each friendly Aerith unit. You cannot pick the same enemy unit more than once in the same phase. After you pick each unit, your opponent must finish that unit two inches, and that unit must finish uh, move more than one inch from any other unit from your army if it's possible to do so. Once those enemy units have been forced to move from any friendly units, that are within three inches of an enemy unit, you can make a one inch pilot. I probably won't even use that one. It's just so, so complicated. I'll use the Enduring Rock one though. That's a useful one. Uh, uh, command traits Majestic, add one to the Bravery characteristic while they're within. The, Holding within 12 inches and subtract the bravery of enemy units by one while they were within 18. So that's so holding within 12 for yours and within 18 if it's the enemy. That's not bad. Enduring, add three to the general's wounds characteristic. Yep. And Lore Master, if this general is a wizard, it knows one extra law from the law of high peaks. Any artifacts of power or mountain people. Heartstone amulet. Roll dice each time a wound or mortal wound is on it. On a five plus, it's negated. Yeah. Each time a unit is affected by a spell or endless spell, you can roll dice on a four plus. It ignores the effects of that spell on the bear. Mm, yeah, it's not bad. Problem is, it's. Uh, I, rather, I think I'll take the Heartstone over the Ebony Stone, but it's just me. Number three, the Magman Hammer. If the bear is a wizard, add one to the number of mortal wounds afflicted by arcane bolt spells. They're cast by the bear. Yeah. Spell Lords. Okay. So you can choose or roll for each spell. Or for one spell from each of the following tables for each wizard that is in the Luminous Realm Lords. Techless knows all the spells in all the following tables. So he knows both the Law of Hush and the Law of High Peaks. Makes sense. He's a spell. He's a 
master wizard. He's the mage god. All right, speed of hashish. Cast in value five. Pick one for enemy within holy within eighteen. Invisible. Double the move characteristic of it until your next hero phase. That's pretty good. Can't complain. Solar flare. Casting value of eight. Pick a point on the battlefield within ten of the cast. Invisible to them. If there is an the spell at that point, it is dispelled. If Excuse me. If there is a unit at the point, roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that. On a six plus, it suffers one more per wound. In addition, until your next hero phase, so sort of two from casting, dispelling, and unbolting wizards. Rolls for wizard. Excuse me. Within twelve. At that point. Okay, so it affects both your wizards and the enemy wizards because it says until your next hero phase, subtract two from casting. The spelling and unbinding rolls for wizards. And that's the catch there. It doesn't say enemy wizards, it just says wizards. So I assume that would include yours. It's weird how it wouldn't, but okay. You're thinking these guys are made to spell casters, it wouldn't affect them, but yeah. Lambent Light has a casting value of five. This is this one cast. Pick one enemy unit with an 18 and visible to them. To your next hero phase, you can re-roll hit rolls for attacks made with missile which is that target that unit. So if you're going heavy shooting, probably be useful. Ethel, oh, ethereal blessing, casting value six. Pick one friendly roll, uh, round world unit. Within 18, wholly within 18, visible to them. Uh, you ignore modifiers, positive or negatives, when making say rolls for attacks. So, you know. so essentially, your uh, knight haunt for that unit. Total Eclipse, casting value of 8. So, sexual cast, your opponent must spend two command points to use a command ability instead of one. That's not a bad one, that's a good one, actually. Especially if you know that that army struggles to get command points or it's very reliant on command points, it could really mess up your opponent's play. Protection of Hish. Casting value 8. This is also the cast. To your next hero phase, roll a dice each time you allocate a mortal or wound or mortal wound to a friendly unit wholly within 9 of the caster. On a 5 plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. Um, this spell cannot be cast in the same hero phase as protection of Teclis. Which I have a feeling is probably a Teclis spell. Yes, it is. So Teclis has a spell that's pretty much the same. The only difference is his is wholly within 18, not. And his casting value is a 10. Yeah. 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 War of the High Peaks. Unyielding Calm. Casting value 4. Pick a Luminous Realm Lord. You know, holy within that 18. Until your next hero phase, do not take battle shock tests for that unit. Useful one, especially if you're going up against a high bravery bomb army. Pretty much go, I don't care if I'm on a need 400, I will not take battle shock. Crippling Vertigo, custom value of 6. Successfully cast, pick one enemy unit, holding within 18. Invisible to them. To your next hero phase, roll 2d6. Before that, you know, makes a normal move, a charge move, or a piling move. If the roll is greater than the unit's bravery characteristic, it cannot make that unit move. Really strong against low bravery armies. So, yeah. Uh, Voice of the Mountain. Casting value of 6, successfully cast. Till the end of the turn, so that's the keyword, end of the turn, subtract two from the bravery cast of an enemy unit. 
Then until your next hero phase, subtract one from the bravery characteristic of enemy units instead. Okay. So, so in that, essentially that round of combat, the first round, you'll subtract two from bravery. Then if it goes into them, so say it's turn two, you get it, the round worlds get it, you get this off. In combat with whatever rocks, let's say, you subject two from that bravery, so they're down to a bravery of two. Then it's there, you know, they're still, the unit's still on the board, amazingly. Then onto the next hero, uh, and then to, oh, blah, blah, blah. onto their turn, their bravery is now not a two, but it's a three. And then if you roll off again, and then you get the, the, the um, priority, then they're back to the leadership four unless you get this off again. So that's how it works. Living Fisher, casting phone six. If successfully cast, pick one point on the battlefield within nine of the cast invisible to them. Draw an imaginary straight line, one millimeter wide, between that point and the closest point of the casting face. Roll a dice for each unit that has models pass across. On a blue two plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal weight. Yeah, that's okay. I really hate it when they do draw imaginary line one millimeter. Just, just say, pick a point. And just take measure it and nine and go right oh, that's it all right entombed casting value of seven successfully cast pick one unit enemy unit within 18. visible cast a roll dice if the roll is greater than the wound, model's wound carries that model is slain if the room with the roll is a six but not greater than the model's characteristic that model suffers suffers D6 mortal wounds. Okay. So it's the wound characteristics, not the so for high so say if you've got a wound seven or eight, this is not gonna do anything, but if we've got wounds of four, five, you're gonna do a lot of damage. And if you get that six on that high wound. We're going to suffer D6 mortal wounds, especially if we get a six off again. So yeah, it's good and bad. Just again, it's a lot of it's army base. If you, who you go against, I mean, it's one I definitely probably take anyway. Yeah, because yeah, it says pick one enemy model. So it could be here or a unit, really. But the thing is that when you if you get a six it states that that model suffers d6 more wounds so this is more just a hero herder than the low heroes assault of stones cast and very obey successfully cast pick one unit wholly within 24 uh, and roll a number of dice equal to the casting roll for each roll that is less than the unit's save characteristic that unit suffers one mortal wound. Rolls of one or two always fail to inflict a mortal wound on the cat on the target. A save characteristic of dash counts as a six for the purpose of this rule. Okay. So we're going to the great nations. Okay. Great nations of Numeta. That's a mountain realm. The enduring rock battle trait changes the ring characteristic of a weapon. So instead of it being a neg one, now it counts as neg one or two. So yeah, so if you've got a high ring army going up against, it's not going to affect these guys. Essentially, the it's a whole army of night haunt. Yeah. But that's only on neg one and neg two. So if you've got a neg three, neg four, it's still going to hurt them. But yeah. but there's very few models that 
have a neck three or more. Uh, command ability, redouble force. You can use this command ability at the end of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly um, unit that has forced an enemy unit to retreat using Teutonic Force for the first time in that phase and wholly within 18 of the friendly hero. You can pick the Battle Force trade for a second time by picking one other enemy unit within one of that friendly unit. Okay. So you do it a second time. Command trait. The general must have this command trait is still what's listed. So almighty blow. When the general fights, instead of piling and attacking, you can say they will unleash a single almighty blow. If you do so, pick one enemy unit within one inches of this general and roll a dice. On a two plus, the enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. That's pretty right. You're always going to... Oh, I shouldn't say you're always going to get a two plus. Very rarely are you going to roll one. So you're more than likely going to get this off majority. Probably say five out, four out of five times you're going to get it off. But bet you, you're always going to fire when you need it. <laughs> That's how it goes, isn't it? And then the artifact of power. So they must be give, this must be the first artifact they receive. Mountain gift. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. Once per phase, you can add one to the damage. Inflicted by one attack made with that weapon. In addition, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to the bearer. On a six, that mortal wound or wound is negated. In addition, each time the bearer is affected by a spell or a spell, you can roll a dice. On a five plus, it ignores its effect. That's pretty good. Especially when they seem to have a few saves on this one. Great Nation Elves. So, all right, gleam of brightness. So they have two ether quartz reserves instead of one. Okay. And depleted reserves. You can use this command ability when a friendly unit uses an ether core reserve ability, even if a friendly unit has already done so in that turn. If you do so, pick one friendly. Unit that has ether core reserve and is wholly within 18 of a friendly hero. That unit can use one ether core, ether core reserve to use that ether core reserve. Ability. Sorry, let me read this. Yeah. You can use this command ability when a friendly unit could use an ether core reserve. Okay. So essentially they're saying that you can use it a second on. You can use this command ability when a friendly unit has used an ether core reserve ability, even if any friendly units have already done so in the turn. Okay, so yeah, you're essentially saying you can do it, do it twice. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Just have to reread it. Like I said, um, first time I've looked at this book, as you can see, it pretty much unwrapped it in front of you. So learning it just as much as you guys. So they must use this command trait and see what's in the, uh, in the book. At the start of the combat phase, pick one enemy hero within six of this general. That enemy hero can only target this general in that phase. In addition, you can add one to hit rolls that four attacks that target the enemy hero in that phase. So essentially, if you could put a spear wall in front of this general so it can hit, you're going to get add one hit rolls for the text that target the enemy here in that phase. Ooh, that's a bit of position needed there, but it could be horrible to, especially if it's a general or something. And then if I artifact of power, pick one of the various melee weapons, and I'll modify hit roll of a three plus for an attack made by that weapon always hits the target. A modifier wound roll of a 3 plus 4 on attack made by the way is always successful. An unmodified saber roll of a 3 or less for attack made by that weapon always fails. 
Okay. So our well, three plus. So essentially, if you've got something that's only four or five plus, you put the, this weapon on it, put this outer plate on it, it's changing it to a three up. But then if you've got a two up to wound on it, then a three or less is going to always fail. So, yeah. So essentially, if you've got something that has a horrible hit, but it's the same with a three up um, wound roll, you're probably going to think about taking it. Ah, great nation of Elitha. Her soul now, add two to the bravery characteristic. Um, oh, after a friendly unit uses a command ability, you can pick one other friendly unit within three of that unit. We just said that unit can also use that command ability without spinning command points. But you can only use this ability once per phase. So essentially, it's just a chain between two units. So you go, I'm going to put, say, Battle Shock on you. And if there's another unit next to it that's three inches, that sort of gets that same ability. So that's all it is. So just saving you some command points or whatever else. So, so for instance, here, the command ability that most you take. Use this command ability in your shooting phase or combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly unit with two or more models. You can reroll hit rolls of one for that unit. So you essentially have that ability that if you've got two units of uh, within three inches of each other, boom, boom, a chained. So now not only the unit that you put it on, but the unit next to it also gets the reroll once. So but you can only do it once per phase. Uh, and then, Artifact of Power is a Simulacrata Artifact. The first time the bearer is saying, before remo removing them on the battlefield roll dice, on a one to three, the bearer is slain. On a four to six, the bearer is not slain. All wounds are allocated, all are healed, and any wounds that are meant to be allocated to them are negated. That one is so much better than that other artifact back. Oh, I really like this faction, or this sub faction. I think it might be the one I want. But I don't know if the, you know, the top, you know, the meta one, but yeah, they interest me. Great Nation of Zakarak. So, Lambert Mystics. Mystics, sorry. Add one to the first casting, dispelling, or unbinding roll for each friendly wizard in the each hero phase. In addition, each wizard knows one extra spell from the appropriate spell law. That's nice. So, this one's very wizard based, this one. Um, a wizard general must have this command trait instead. So, fast learner, you can attempt to cast. Uh, you can attempt to unbind one extra spell in the enemy hero phase. In addition, the second time that this general attempts to unbind a spell in the same enemy hero phase, you can re-roll the unbinding roll. So if you fail it, you essentially get a free re-roll. Don't complain about that. Um, effect power, gift of Selene. So that's the, this is a gift from the um, Teclis's partner. Uh, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or more wound to the bearer. Add two to the roll of the ticklers as part of your army and on the battlefield. On a six up, the mortal wound or wound is negated. So, yeah, so if you've got ticklers, so if you go four, it still counts. Or five, it still counts. But if you don't have ticklers, you're going to have a six up. So. Feels like you really might have to take Techless to make this this sub faction sort of work. I have a feeling. And then the law. So this is one of those ones where they must know this one. Oh, sorry. The, oh, they just know it. So overwhelming heat. So the Carthage Valley Seven. 
They're successful the cars, pick one enemy unit wholly within 24 of the cast, invisible to them. Half the move characteristic of that unit until your next hero phase. They roll a dice. If the roll is equal to or greater than a unit save characteristic, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Nice. Then we got the strike plans, you know, just the things. Path of Glory. Let's skip that. War Scrolls. So, Tekalian Vanguard. So you need Teclis, a Vitalarian, a Templar Battalion, a, Legion, a One Legion Battalion, One to Three Legion Battalions, Two Dawn Rider Lance Battalions. So, Blessing of Teclis. So, roll on dice each time you have Mortal Wound. From a unit in this battalion, what's well, wholly within its own territory? On a six, the wound is negated. Yeah, okay. You feel like for such a big amount of points you're going to spend, and they wouldn't make it a bit more, I don't know, impressive. If that was a four or three up, I'll be going, yeah. Then on six, when you got artifacts and other things in here that are fives. Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to get like, oh, what is it, five, five, six, say, it's before we actually get wounded. <laughs> but yeah. All right, the temp Aerith Temple. So this includes the Stone Heart King or Spirit of the Mountain, Stone Mage. Or one to three of the stone guard. So at the start of the combat phase, any storm friendly storm stone guard unit from the battalion that are wholly within twelve of a friendly hero from that same battalion can turn their skin to stone to the end of that phase. You can re-roll save rolls where it takes that target the unit that has turned it to stone. Like units, then that unit has turned it to, its skin to stone can only move one inch when they part it. So you can re-roll any so it's a re-roll save roll, so it doesn't say failed to any save rolls, but you can only move one inch when you pile on. Then the Legion, so that's this Cathola. Cathola, there you go. So that's the um, that woman was the veil. Two to four units of Sentinels and an equal number of units of Wardens. Ooh, pricey there. Shield of Light, you can re-roll same rounds of one for attacks that target a friendly unit in the battalion while it's within three of any other front friendly units from the same battalion. So uh, essentially if you have them within three inches, you've got a permanent mystic shield on. Mm. Yeah, oh, I don't know. It's, it's okay. I mean, re-rolling ones, you can never complain about that. Sharp of Light, one of Dawn Light events. Okay, so re-roll hit rolls of one for takes that made with melee weapons by a friendly unit from this battalion that has made a charge move in the same turn. And that you need two to three. Yeah, if you get a charge off, it's great. But it's three roll ones to hit. Feel a bit like lackluster. There's only four battalions in here, too. Uh, I mean, why worry about the big one? That's, yeah, unless you're playing big games, who cares about that one? Um, but the Dawn Rider Lance is the worst one. The Legion's okay. And the Temple was probably the better one of the lot. But it's only for Stun Guard. Yeah. Okay. Archmage Ticklis. I like that. They've got Archmage Ticklis and Bullprint, and then the small print, and Selena, Spirit of Hage. Come on, 
They're meant to be equal partners. You've got to have them both involved. So, move characteristic. He's got it. So when he gets wounded, it'll go down. So starts off at 12, then 10, 8, 6, 4. Uh, wins at 16, 4 up save, and 10 bravery. Um, he can fly. So this is at starting here phase, you must say, if this model will cast one, two, or up to four spells, if this model will cast one spell, when it attempts to cast that spell, it automatically passes. Casters do not roll d6, cannot be unbound. So if you're going to say it's only going to do one, you pick whatever spell and it'll just cast it. And it cannot be unbound either. So if you want a really, really powerful one from the wall there, because he knows all of them, it'll be useful. It's circumstantial, but it'll be useful. If this model casts two when it attempts to cast a spell, it automatically casts with the casting roll 12. It cannot be modified. Enemy was, sorry. If this model will cast two spells, when it attempts to cast a spell, each is automatically cast with a casting roll of a 12. That cannot be modified. Do not roll a d6, 2d6. Enemy was can attempt to unbind the spells. Okay, so if you cast two spells, essentially the trigger is two twelves. And but the enemy can attempt to unbind them. Maybe with thirteen though. Not impossible, but yeah. I mean I've done it before, the cinch. When my opponent got a twelve and then I was in the right ter terrain and Madden got a thirteen. If this model attempts to cast up to four spells when it attempts to cast a spell, each is automatically cast with a casting roll of 10. They cannot be modified, do not roll 2d6. Enemy wizards can attempt to unbind these spells. So essentially, the cast was treated as you got 10s. So if they get 11 or 12, it's unbind or anything higher than that. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. So the aura of his mount, add one to casting, dispelling, and unbinding rolls for friendly round world units within range of this aura. Yeah, and then its range starts at 16, and then as it suffers wound, it goes down to 16, 12, 8, 6, 4. Uh, this of element here. Okay, so he's got magic to set worlds of course the realm around him to absorb hostile magic. In your hero phase, in addition to casting one, two, or up to four spells, this model can automatically cast, oh, yeah, it can automatically dispel one inner spell, and not roll 2d6. In an enemy hero phase, this model can automatically unbind one enemy spell. Okay. Seeing stone and up his mount. Each time a friendly unit within range of this aura ability is affected by endless or any spell or a spell cast by an enemy wizard, you can roll dice on the four up and ignores that spell. And pick one enemy unit within 18 of that unit, the enemy unit suffers 13 of uh, D3 mortal wounds. And again, as it gets weaker. Uh, he's a wizard, and know that. Uh, he's got the protection techless, so cast him by 10. That's the one where he's got five up more wings negated than that. So, God, so any units that are wholly within. So, wholly within. No, it just says within. So, essentially, you could, if you cast that off, we're getting a four up, five up. <laughs> Ooh, I can see why Tiflis is worth his points. Then he's got a offensive spell, Castleberry 10. Each successful cast roll dice for each enemy unit within 18 of the caster. On a one, nothing happens. On a two to four, what's up is D3. On a five, up. 
up as d6. Be careful. Light of Ethereum. So he's got his blades. The start of the combat phase, you pick one enemy hero with them three. If you do so, add one to the damage. Uh, okay. And it's other sword, bang sword. Add one to wound rolls of attacks made with his bang sword. If the model made a charge move in the same turn. In addition, um, modified wound rolls made for attacks on a fang sword as a six. Inflicts one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. So Serian Lights. So in the shooting phase, pick one with an 18, enemy unit within the one. Uh, you pick one enemy unit with an 18. Invisible. On a one, nothing happens. On a two to four, it's up to D3. On a five up, it's up to D6. But essentially, this guy likes causing mortal wounds. He ignores modifiers. In addition, half the damage inflicted by missile weapons or melee weapons that target this model rounding up. This is Supreme Swordman. Ignores modifiers. Needed modifiers when making hit rolls for attacks that made by this model. In addition, the unmodified hit roll of attack made by this model is a six. That attack scores two hits on target instead of one. Because wound and save off each hit. Mm. And his command ability, if you use it, you can use it at the start of the battle shot. If you just so pick one friendly model with his command ability until the end of play, all friendly limit holding within 24 with you having a bravery character of 10. Okay. So he moves six, wound to seven, he's got three up. That's right, bravery 10. So his fang sword is a one inch, four attacks, twos to hit, three to wound, nick three ren, d3 damage. And his selenium blade is one, one inch, two attacks, two to hit, three to wound, nick one, d3 damage. I didn't even do Teclis, did I? Sorry. So Teclis is, he's got missile weapon, 18 inch, one attack. Two to hit, two to wound, neck three, d6. That's right. Melee weapon, his sword, sword of techless, one inch, two attacks, fours to hit, th twos to wound, neck three, d3 damage. And then the talons, uh, one inch. Depends how many wounds he has, depends how many he takes to so six, five, four, three, two. He's three to hit, three to wound. Need two ran and two damage. Mm, so the archmage is he's got some offensive there too. The Cathal uh, the woman lady was the male. <laughs> Movement of six. Wounds of five. Five up, so seven bravery. she's only got one attack, despairing touch. One in range, one attack, four to hit, two to wound, no ran, but d3 damage. So, yeah, so abilities, emotional transparency at the start of the battle phase, you can pick one friendly round world unit with holding within 18 of the mile roll test. Uh, two up, do not take battle shot test for the unit. You know, in addition, if any other models from that unit were slain during that turn, you can pick one enemy unit within 18 of this model. It has to take battle shot tests. If you do so, you add the number of models to, from that friendly unit that was slain during that turn to the modified battle shot roll of any unit. Ooh, that's mean. And it, because it says that it has to take a battle shot test, that would mean that command ability wouldn't work on it. Because it states that it must, that well, it has to take it. Yeah, so essentially if you kill four off on that and then they do this ability, you have to add that four you kill off on, onto your own unit. 
So it's, it's a nice ability. It's a wizard, so it can attempt to cast one spell and attempt to unbind one. It knows um, I came Mystic and Darkness of Soul. Darkness Soul has a cast value of seven, picking one enemy unit within 18. Visible caster until your next hero phase. Roll 2d6 each time that unit makes a normal move, makes a charge, shoot, or fight. If they roll, make the roll before the action is carried out. If the roll is greater than that unit's bravery characteristic, that unit cannot perform that action on phase. So essentially, it's just stopping. It's going, you can't do anything. Now, the Dawn Riders. Movement 14, two wounds. Four save, seven bravery, melee weapons, guardian sword, one inch, two attacks, three to hit, four to wound, need one, one damage. The late sun metal lights, two inch range, one attack, three up, four to wound, so three to hit, four to wound, one damage. Dashing hooves, one inch, two attacks, four to hit, four to wound, no round, one damage. So each is um, was a sun metal lance. Uh, one unit in this model can be steam master. His arm was a lance and a sword. One of five units can be a standard bearer. You can reroll battle shot test for that unit if it has any standard bearers. Abilities: fifty powers. Start of combat phase. You can say that you get this unit will use the ability. If we do so, you know. Basically, you can add one to attack characteristics of this melee weapon. Oh, excuse me. But it can only target units that have a wound characteristic of one or two and do not have a mount. Or you can add two to the attack characteristic of this melee weapon, but you can only target units that have a wound characteristic of one and do not have a mount. Yes, I know. Probably good against swords. Lance of the Dawn. This unit may get a charge move in the same turn. Add one to the wounds. Or take me with the lances and prove the ring by the weapon of by, um, one. Yeah. Essentially, it'll be hitting on three, wounding on three, need one. Some little weapon. If this. Uh, Lance um, hit rolls a six and fix one more wound on the target and the sequence ends. This is actually going to roll to win. Uh, a Steam Master of this unit is a wizard. Well, this unit has three or more models. And they know the power of Hashish spell. Power of Hashish. Casting value of six. Successfully cast, pick one. Pick your until if you successfully cast until the next hero phase the sun metal weapon ability for the caster or you know the a part of the part of causes mortal wounds to be inflicted on an unmodifiable hit roll of five plus and zero six. six okay yeah. any number of Lum luminous ramold wizards can attempt to cast power for hashish in the same Hero face. So if you've got two or three of these, they'll just you can just cast it. But it's gotta be on that unit. Sentinels, six inch move, one wounds each, five up, six bravery. Missile weapons, the bow aimed, 18 inch. One attack, three is to hit, four is to wound, near one, one damage. And loft is 30 inch. One attack, four is to hit, four to wound, but one damage. And their weapons, uh, Champion's Blade, need one, oh sorry, one inch range, two to two attack, three to hit, four to wound, need one, one damage, and the daggers are one inch, one attack, three up, four to wound, th oh, sorry, three to hit, four to wound, no ring, one damage. Yeah, so the High Sentinel carries the Champion Blades to the dagger, and they carry the Skyhawk. Lantern. So the lantern at the start of your hero shooting phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 30 of this unit, and that is not visible to them. 
If you do so, you can choose a lock with missile within all attacks made by that unit in that base, but that M unit is treated as being visible to that model unit until the end of that phase. Okay. So essentially I'm shooting in you when you're in cover. And it's not doing anything to me. Yeah. Before attacking with the bows, you must choose which one you're picking. And all shooting attacks are made by that unit in that phase. Must you, you know, you must either pick one or the other. You can't have a mixture. So if the bow hit roll, unmodified hit roll is a six, inflicts one model wound and it stops. So attack sequence ends. Uh, it's a wizard, so if you've got five or more, um, it does power has huge, so it changes that from six to a five. That's it. Wardens, six inch move, one to wound, four to save, six bravery. The blade, the champion's blade is one inch, two attacks, three to hit, four to wound, big one, one damage. The pike is three inches. Two attacks, three to hit, four to wounds, no ram, one damage. So the high waters, it's R with the blade instead of the pike. The moon fire flask, the, the high warden carries it. Once per battle at the start of your combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within three of us. It is high warden, the roll dice on a two plus, it suffers D3 more uh, So there's some. Metal weapons, so again, I'm a, I'm off by six, put some more wound. War blades, if the unit, target unit made a charge in the same turn, add one to wound or Oswald attacks. By the pikes, improve that ring characteristic by one. And of course, it, so this is an inverse power for so it changes to, from a six to a five. So, mages. So it's six inch move, five wounds, five up, uh, eight bravery. Stuff of the high peaks, it's a melee weapon, with three inch, D3 attacks, three up to hit, three to wound, need one D3 damage. Ability, Stone Mage Stance. In the combat phase, you can say it will adopt a Stone Mage Stance. If you do so, any model, this model and any other friendly Stone Guard units wholly within 12 of it. Cannot make a piling move in that phase. Instead, in, help it, until the end of the phase, improve the rank counter to the weapons used by models and those friendly units by one. Okay. The so wizard, and its spell is Grotavic Redirection, it has a cast of value of five. Until your next hand phase, the cast can fly. Okay, I thought you could have read there you go. In addition, you can pick one enemy unit within 18 other casts if you do so. That unit suffers one mortal wound, and until your next hero pose, that unit can move characters at half and cannot fly. Yeah, that's right. Stone Guard. Water move. Two wounds, four up save, seven bravery. So, Stone Mallet or Diamond Picked Hammer. One inch, two attacks, three up to hit, three up to wound, need one, one damage. Or Stratum Hammer, or Hammers. One inch, three attacks, three to hit, four to wound, no ram, one damage. One unit can be a true stone sesh seal. It is armed with a pair of Stratum Hammers instead of the weapons options. One and five can be a center bearer. It can Reroll battle shock test for that unit. Crushing blow. Any unmodified hit rolls with a stone mother is six. Add one to the damage. That's right. So instead of doing one damage, it's doing two. Diamond pick hammer. If the unmodifier is six, that inflicts a mortal wound, and then the attack sequence ten. And if you got a pair of Stratham hammers, you can reroll hit bones. Hit rolls. So you can re roll hit rolls for a pair of them. So, yeah. Spread on the mountain. So six inch move, 12 wounds, 
pretty up so team bravery missile weapon geomatic blast so again it's got a damage table so the blast range is starts at 30 to 25 20 15 10 there's one attack three to hit two to wounds need two ring d6 damage that's right Stoneheart, a melee weapon, Stoneheart, World Hammer, three inch range, four attacks, three to hit, two to wounds, new two damage, and it's got um, more um, wounds on it, the less damage does, so what is it? So it does five damage to start with, then four, three, two, one. And Clover Hooves is one inch, two attacks, threes and threes, need one, two damage. Okay. So all but immovable if this model does not make a charge move in your charge phase, add one to the attacks of this model's melee weapons until your next hero phase. Okay. That's all right. Ponderous advice. At the end of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly round world elf hero within three inches of this model if that is. Hero is within three of this model at the start of your next hero phase. And that can, it, oh, can you just essentially you can just use a command ability without spending any command points if you're within three. But it's at the start of your next hero phase. Uh, I sometimes wish they didn't do all this needless writing. It'd just be easy to say, the start of your hero phase, pick a hero that is within three, and you can use that command ability. Oh, yeah, so it's, at the end of your hero phase, you've got to pick that one. And then at the start of your next one, if you're still within three, you can, you can spend it for free. A lot of writing, therefore, needless. This shock wave, uh, start of shock wave at the start of your enemy shooting phase, you, and at the start of any combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within range of this model stone high ability, which is degradable, depends on wounds. So it's 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4. Uh, if you get her off, yeah, if you do so, subtract one from hit rolls, maybe all that. Yeah, until the end of the phase. It cannot be affected by this ability more than once per phase. Stone Age Symbius. When you look at the phase of the damage to if the model is within 12 of a friendly Stone Age, this model is treated as if it has suffered zero wounds. Okay, so if you've got a Stone Mage, so like, yeah, Stone Mage within 12 of it, Essentially, this damage table means nothing. Then, Faith of the Mountain. Use this command ability. Pick one friendly um, elf, so the mountain elves. Hold it within 18 of a friendly model. This is command ability. Add one to the attack characteristic of the unit melee weapon in the combat phase. It cannot benefit from this more than once, and the unit cannot benefit from the ability and unshakable faith of the mountain ability in the same phase. Okay. I bet you, yep. Eleanor the Stone King, so that's the unshakable faith. So, move six, wounds supporting, three up save, timber apri, weapons, geometric glass, set chief same range. Damage shots 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 1 attacks, 3 to hit, 2 to win, you need 2 d6. Fire steel and hammer is 2 inch, 6 attacks, 3s three, and 3s, neg 1, and the damage e depends on how many wounds it's got, but it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then the hooves again the same, 1 inch, 2s, 3s and 3s, neg 1, 2 damage. All but unmovable, if it does not charge, just add 1 to attacks. Until your next movement phase. Um, ah, fire steel hammers. If you roll a six, a modifiable hit roll a six, inflicts one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. Out of wisdom, 
end of your hair, if I just pick one, listen. Oh. Essentially, it's the same as ponderous advice, but instead of a three inch, it's a six inch. So let's say pick a uh, hero at the end of your hero phase within six. If it's still within six at the start of your next hero phase, free command ability. Gani or Shish, subtract one for hit rolls for attacks made by the end models that are within range of the models. Gani or Shish ability range is again above on the chart. So 12, 6, 3, 2, 1. If it's got a stone mage next to it, so it's got the stone mage symbiotes, it's zero, so it's damage sharp means nothing. And then unshakable faith of the mountain. If you use this command ability at the start of the combat phase, do so pick D3 friendly unit, Athel and Alps of the stone elves. Units wholly within 24 of the model. Add one to the attack characteristics of those melee weapons. Cannot benefit from more than once and it cannot benefit from the fact of mountain ability as well. In the spells, so Hashishin Twin Stones, it's a predatory, can move up to eight inches and can fly. Some of them cast in value seven, only looming three more woods can attempt to cast a spell, successfully cast it at one twin stone model holding within six of the in uh, of the caster. Where's the bar of power? When sitting, when this model set up, place a d6 beside it was it facing, was the one facing up. Each time a spell is successfully cast by a unit within 12 of this model, not unbound, after it picks up the spell, has resolved. resolve. Increase the value of the dice beside this model by one. If a round wall wizard attempts to cast a spell within 12 of this model before making a cast from player controlling the wizard can say that it will draw the power of the twin stones if you just uh, add the value of the dice beside the model to the casting roll then after the effect is to, after the effects of the spell can resolve change the value of the dice back to a one so essentially it's just mystic terrain but better so instead you have any, so instead of a one up if you, more spells are cast within 12 you'll go from two and then you go right hey, i need to get the spell off you might just draw say if it's got a five and you roll a say 10 take the five off it's a 15. but what happens is you must pretty much use that whole one up you can't just say oh i'll do only two and i have three left because it just brings it back to a one so i, I can see people taking it Centrum of amni talk it's a single single in the spell that consists of three models. If it is the spell, remove all three. Oh yes, I said one that looks like lightning bolt here. But casting value seven, only round walls can spent. Attempt to cast it. Um set up one sanctum up, holding within three of the caster and more than three inches from any other unit, then set up a second third model a sanctum model. So that the tip of each is touching the tip of a different model of the same of the spell. Each model must be more than three from any other units with the caster inside the ring. As long as the sanction remains on the battlefield, the caster inset is treated as being a single model from the caster's army and uses the caster's war scroll as well as the inner spell rule. It is treated as an enemy model by the opposing army's player. If the caster is slain, then the sanctum is dispelled and removed from play along with the caster. If the, cast, if the sanctum is dispelled and the caster has not been slain, remove the inner spell model from the play and leave the caster on the battlefield. Signals of you there. Subtract one from hit rolls and add one to save rolls for attacks that target this model. In addition, at the end of the combat phase, if this model was targeted by any enemy attacks during that phase, roll a dice not for each enemy unit that's in three of the model. One to three, nothing happens. One to four to five, the unit suffers one model wound. One to six, it suffers D3 model wounds. Okay. Hmm. Rune of Publication. 
Yeah, so casting value. Okay, so it's casting value of eight. Only mammals can do it. Set up one, holding within the idea of the caster. Turn to stone. The start of the movement phase and at the end of the movement phase. Roll dice for each unit within six of it. Or four up, so it's D3. Oops, in addition, subtract one from rather charge rolls within six. This ability has no effects on round walls. And then the points that everyone was waiting for. So the wardens, unit size, minimum 10, max of 30, points 120, they are battle line. Notes, for each warden unit, including your army, you can take one sentinel or one uh, dorm row unit as a battle line. Okay, so if you've got essentially one of these spearmen and you've got a set of archers and a set of um, riders, they all count as battle line. There's your three battle line done. Not too bad, eh? All right, so the spirit of the mountain, min size is one, max size one, 340 points, and it's a behemoth. The stone mage is 130 points, and it's a leader. The cathedral, so the veil lady, is 140, and a leader. The Light of Valerian is 220, he's a leader, and he's unique. Then Archmage Teclas and Salan Spirit of Hashish is 660, he's a leader, behemoth, and unique. The Stoneheart King is 360, he's a leader, a behemoth, and unique. The Stone Guard, min unit of 5, max of 15, they're 100 points each. Battle line of the Eureka army. Is that the one I like? I'm going to go for Quanda. Um, yeah. Okay, so those are the Great Nation. So they're pretty much the first ones at the back. It's weird how they've got a picture of a spearman there, but you think they should have a picture of a stone guard. All right, the Sentinels. Men of 10, max of 20, they're 140. And then they can be better line if you got the wardens. So essentially you massive wardens. Even one unit. Then you can have battle line for two others. Or you can have three wardens, whatever you want. So yeah. But sentinels and dormorrows can't be battle line unless they have a warden. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Dawn Riders, min of 5, max of 20, the 130. Again, that's the same thing. All right, the Temple Battalion is 120. The Legion Battalion is 120. The Last Battalion is 120. And the Tekillion Vanguard is 80 points. Uh, the Twin Stones are 30. These are endless spells, sorry. Then the spells. Twin stones is 30, the rune of precarication is 70, and the sanctum is 30. The faction, the realm lords, their only allies are Deepkin. I have a feeling that might be changing. Yeah. In general, sample apparently. And that is essentially that. So. I might look at doing some law about them because there is a lot of law in this book. So we might do some videos about that. Something to do. Um, we will be having hopefully maybe this weekend talking about ninth, even though it is the fifth and a fifth year anniversary of Age of Sigma. But other than that, I think that's about it. Um, yes. So well, we're on a little while. There was a lot to cover. So hopefully those who have their box sets will be enjoying them, building them, painting them up. Those who unfortunately missed out, well, hopefully the army will come out sooner rather than later so then you can buy them quickly and get them playing. But then, but until next time, everyone be safe, paint your models, have a good time. Ah, oh, we've got Three things to announce. 
All right, so first thing, Rocky is having one day a day, a Sigma tournament on the, give me one sec, I will double check the dates because I don't want to get it wrong. The 18th of July, it's one day, 2,000 points, three games, I believe. So if you haven't, go on to Cap uh, some very long day, guys. So sorry, forgive me. I'm sure it's Capricornia Garage Hammer. Yeah, it's Capricornia Garage Hammer. Jump on there and let them know that you're interested. So, is that? Um, I don't think he's got really too much restriction in place. I think he's just um, the organizer. He just wants people to come and play. So. I mean, he encourages you having a fully painted army, but he's, he just want people to come out and play and have fun. Uh, I believe it's just $20 to play, so that's pretty good. Then we have the Age of Sigma 40... Oh, the, the Age of Sigma 2000-point tournament here in Gladstone at the Urella venue. It is on the 12th and 13th. 2000 points, uh, $40. Um, I will be asking money... Probably August, mainly because uh, what's, what's happening, I don't want everyone's money and then start buying stuff and then find out, oh, uh, yeah, it will get postponed because what's happened. So just keep your eye out. Um, player pack will be out shortly. I'm just waiting for the general's handbook to come out. So hopefully once it comes out, we'll plan everything and we'll go from there. Then the last thing is November. November 14th, 15th is Warhammer 40k tournament. Um, we'll be doing 9th edition. Um, it's $40 as well. Uh, 2,000 points at the URL Centre as well. So, yeah. Well, that's all. If anyone has any events or whatever happening, let me know and I'll put them up here. Otherwise, you all have a good night and I'll see you next time.